Hi everybody, Simon Whiteley here. Just wanted to record a follow-up video to the video I did yesterday about the control structure model, the response to the coronavirus COVID-19. I had some really interesting feedback and some comments which I'd like to uh, touch on in this video. So the first thing I'd like to touch on is that clearly this model was just created very rapidly based on a very high level you know, information I'm not an expert in this field and so I've not included some really key uh, aspects uh, which Sophia kindly highlighted in terms of the World Health Organization and various uh, national and international health organizations um, and specialist personnel that would look at specifically these kinds of things such as the virus itself and its behavior, how it's transmitted uh, and then the, the uh, human bodily response to it and then how that information is transmitted around the various uh, specialisms, various different areas, healthcare providers, uh, and how that information is used. So uh, if I was to iterate this model, I would certainly include that information. Um, and because I've not included that information, it's highlighted just one of the things that we all have to recognize, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Um, and we have to have uh, appropriate subject matter experts involved in developing these models to make sure that we include appropriate aspects. So thanks very much for that, Sophie. I really appreciate it. So another topic I'd just like to touch on, which was uh, highlighted by Thorsten with regards to the situation in Germany. He talks about the fact that the medical teams, they don't want to be associated with um, placing restrictions on the general public on what they can and can't do. Um, and they're very careful about that. And I think that that is absolutely correct. Um, but I think in the context of the general public and their control algorithm, you know, their behaviours and their mental model, their understanding of what's going on over here, I'm sure reasonable members of the public would appreciate a, you know, a real candid view of what's actually happening in the medical domain. And I, I think I mentioned it yesterday, the general public, I don't believe, really understand how serious this virus actually is. And there is a lot of talk about it being the same as, or very similar to the flu. Uh, yes, it is a virus, so yes, by comparison, it is similar to the flu, but it's so much more contagious. It's so much more serious for people, and it can, people can have, uh, you know, be infectious and not know it for many, many days. And that makes this so much more dangerous than, normal, than the normal flu. But if the mental model of the external public, uh, the general public, is not been updated appropriately, then what do we expect when they behave the way that they do, go and have barbecues and things like that? So ultimately it's how their mental model and their control algorithm has been updated with that new information so that they can, they have a chance to be able to behave accordingly. So uh, Mike and uh, David, you highlighted the economic impacts of keeping everybody locked down for such a considerable amount of time, especially with the financial issues that are going on in the world markets. So what I've done is I've added this to the control structure model, literally just, you know, what is the control process we're talking about? So it's the, it's the economy. Uh, what is that under the control and influence of? Well, clearly there's a relationship with the general public, both from having an economy, uh, you know, that pays taxes and provides employment and goods and services, but also that, um, that the success of the economy has an effect on their daily lives. You've then also got the business and trade aspects. You've then also got, well, hang on, who or what is in control at these top levels of the economy? Well, there's some level of governmental control, but clearly all of this has to be coordinated in some shape or form because actions over here or here such as locking down the general public whilst that might solve problems or minimize problems over here at what point is a decision going to be made that will limit the impact upon this given that they are closely related to each other you know ultimately this is one big system you know components that interact arranged in a hierarchy and those those systems those parts of the systems have to be balanced so in terms of the control algorithm of those in charge and the mental model of it, how and when are they going to make decisions about what to do to not only minimise the impact on the health system, minimise the number of deaths that's going to happen, 
but also manage the economy. Because clearly destroying the economy is going to have a lot of effects on the general public, you know, perhaps even more so than the number of deaths due to the virus. So this, you know, decision making has to start happening at some point soon, because whilst we can enforce this lockdown for a long period, what's that going to mean for the economy in the longer term? Now, conversely, there is also the consideration of keeping the lockdown in place for longer, because that will flatten the curve and lessen the effects and impacts of the virus in the medium term. But that longer shutdown will have a larger impact on the economy. So the decision might be, well, could we do a shorter lockdown or phased lockdowns, perhaps? And that might give the economy some chance to uh, recover and adapt, perhaps. But again, that will have a negative impact over here. So my question is, what are those decisions that need to be made? Who needs to make those decisions in terms of the algorithm? What information do they, they need? What's their mental model? And then what is the timing of these control actions? How do we time this so that we can get appropriate positive safety impact on the healthcare system and the safety of the general population from a virus perspective, but also that we don't completely destroy the economy and cause even more death and destruction? I'd be really keen to hear your thoughts. Please comment below. Um, of course, if you like this video, please, uh, please like the video share it with your friends and colleagues, and of course, visit my YouTube channel and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Two things that I need to just add, actually, now I've said that, um, is just all the best uh, getting well, Boris Johnson, Prime Minister. Uh, we need your enthusiasm to get us through this, just like uh, Winston Churchill back in the day. Um, but the other thing just related to that as well is, I was talking about the control algorithm and mental model of the general public, i.e. all of us. Um, and I need to sort of express that we really need to move, I think, from thinking in terms of peacetime conditions, you know, control algorithm, mental model, to that this is war conditions and we need to behave that way. Uh, you know, the, the, the British approach is keep calm and carry on. I think we need to do that, but I think we need to take this as serious as it actually is, both from a virus pandemic perspective, but also from the environmental and economic impact perspective. Um, so I would love to know your thoughts on this, uh, moving from peace to war in terms of how we behave, conduct ourselves, respect each other and the rules, um, but also that this is very serious. Please let me know your thoughts on that. I, I would love to know.